Piers ripped apart. Roads replaced with rivers. These are some of the scenes left behind in coastal South Carolina, battered by Hurricane Ian's second landfall. But the state seems to have avoided the sort of devastation emerging in Florida. We had no storm-related deaths. We had no hospitals damaged. All water systems were and are okay. We had only a few cell cellular problems. Uh, most of the electricity uh, has been restored. That's in contrast to Florida, where entire homes were washed out to sea, and many escaped Ian's storm surge with nothing but their lives. The water was up to my balcony here, and uh, it was just like you could dive right off the balcony because it's just water everywhere and stuff floating on it. It's this feeling that you're going to die. The urgent priority now is saving as many people and pets as possible. Hey, is he okay in there? More than 20 Floridians are already victims of the storm, including the tragic deaths of two people who needed power to live. It was a couple that was on uh, on, on breathing uh, ventilators and that were, that were connected to the grid. They were electric and when the power went out, uh, they, they, were, they were taken off that that assistance. In Cuba, Ian caused a nationwide blackout earlier this week. Residents still without electricity took to the streets around the capital for a second night in frustration. The Cuban government said it hoped to have the lights back on by the end of the weekend and claims the protests are delaying restoration. But for many Cubans facing shortages of food, fuel and medicine, even before the storm, the blackouts appear to be the last straw. Both the number of casualties and repair costs remain unclear, but it could be the most expensive Florida storm in decades. One property data and analytics company estimates that insurers are bracing for a hit between 28 and $47 billion. Karen Siolin, City News.